Ya estamos transmitiendo desde la sala 2 de la conferencia. Where we will have several projects that have been going through different generations of the impact transfer program and who are related to the education theme. They have a specific interest in the Latin American region and the Spanish speaker community. If you are interested in supporting any of these initiatives, you can fill in the contact form you will find in the impact transfer section of our platform and you will be able to support in order to go and move ahead. And this opportunity, this session will be the Sorry, my lack of pronunciation. Director of the Zero Pre Impact Transfer Project that has been developed by Ashoka and one of the leaders of the Zero Impact Project. Welcome and thank you very much, Loic. On behalf of the whole Zero Project Impact Transfer team, I would like to warmly welcome you to this very first Impact Transfer Forum in Latin America. Thank you for your presence and interest. My name is Loïc Van Kutzem. I work for Ashoka, based in Austria, and I feel extremely honored to be chairing this forum today. I have the huge privilege of indeed leading our impact transfer program uh, with Zero Project and Fundación Descubreme. For those who cannot see me, I'm a white male. I have a beard, uh, a containment beard probably, and um, my hair, I'm wearing a blue shirt, and my hair is increasingly turning gray. A couple of words on Ashoka. Um, Ashoka is the leading global network of social entrepreneurs and change makers people who are seeking to solve societal problems with innovative and systemic solutions. We select, connect, and provide support to over 4,000 social entrepreneurs in 90 countries all over the world. Our goal is to help these innovators to scale their impact and to change systems for the better. Our vision is a world where everyone is a change maker. I repeat, everyone is a change maker. We believe having the tools and opportunities to create change is a human right and should be accessible to all. And we need to make sure that no one is left behind. With several colleagues all over the world, um, I co-lead this program called Impact Transfer, um, where we support the replication and the transfer of proven social innovations in new geographies where they are requested by local partners. So it's all about replicating what works rather than reinventing the wheel. With the incredible support of ESO Foundation, Fundación Descubreme, and many other partners all over the world, we select solutions from the Zero Project shortlist that have a proven impact model and the potential to scale their impact internationally. Each year, we support the 10 selected initiatives through trainings, individual mentoring, matchmaking with partners, and visibility during the Zero Project conferences in Austria and today in Latin America. As a result, these initiatives develop and improve their transfer strategy, and they initiate transfer projects with local stakeholders who are very much part of the Zero Project community local stakeholders who are willing to adapt and adopt these proven solutions to solve their local challenges. 31 projects have already participated in our program and 10 new projects are currently participating this year. Not only do these projects confirm that our program help them to build internal capacity and expertise on topics like replication and transfer, but several projects have already replicated their models in new and at the same time, we are trying to develop an ecosystem of replication partners willing and able to transfer these proven solutions to other parts of the world. Today, 
seven alumni of our impact transfer program. and their model with you and they look forward to exploring partnership opportunities in order to scale their work and their impact in Chile and Latin America. This forum will start with a panel discussion before we hear the four minute presentations from our seven program alumni. During this forum and afterwards you will have the opportunity to connect with these projects, to learn from them, to share your feedback with them and to explore collaboration opportunities. We encourage you to use the chat function on the platform to share comments, ideas, questions. Comentarios, sus ideas, sus preguntas. And you can perhaps start now by sharing where you are connecting from and what motivated you to join this forum. Let's start with the panelists. Let me now introduce our distinguished panelists. Let me now introduce our distinguished panelists. Um, we have yeah. Catalina Salle. Uh, Catalina Salle is the president of Fundación Descubre. She has a degree in English literature and linguistics and a master of arts at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, as well as an MBA for the University of Chicago. She is also the vice president of Fundación Corpartes and president of the Colegio Lodare Educational Foundation as well as the vice president of COPESA group and member board member of SOFOFA. Grupo COPESA y miembro de Catalina. We also welcome today in our panel, Nevgul Bilsel Safkan, who is the general manager of the Sabanchi Foundation, the Sabanchi group, one of the largest conglomerates in Turkey. She manages various programs for a society where everybody enjoys their rights equally. She worked as Chief Financial Officer and General Manager in leading Turkish companies for the last 25 years. And she is a trustee of the Community Volunteers Foundation and a member of the Executive Board of the Third Sector Foundation of Turkey and the Education Reform Initiative. And lastly, we welcome, of course, Martin Nesso. Uh, Martin is an entrepreneur coming from a, an entrepreneurial family in Austria, but is also very well known for their dedication to social responsibility and modern arts. Martin, together with his wife and his children, established the ESO Foundation in 2007. Um, they support social entrepreneurs and implement social innovations with a focus on education, employment, and accessibility for persons with disability. And the main project of the ESO Foundation is, of course, the Zero Project. Furthermore, Martin is a loyal and remarkable supporter of Ashoka since years and a, a dear friend. Um, so welcome all three of you to this, to this panel. Um, and I'd like to start with Martin, uh, if I may, with the first question. Um, Martin, Impact Transfer Program is a joint program between Zero Project, Fundación Descubreme and Ashoka. And this is the fourth year of the program already. What do you want to achieve with this program? How, why, did, why, why did this start? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the whole uh, Zero Project team and community, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, Zero Project Impact Transfer Forum uh, in Chile. For many years, we have been selected and showcasing innovations in the field of disability uh, to you, our global community of supporters. And with the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program, Ashoka, Fundación du Descubreme, uh, our partners like Sabanchi Foundation uh, and our pro bono mentors, we go now one step further. We support the Zero Project innovators to transfer their impactful innovations to new places. The Zero Project is the ideal platform to transfer social innovations with its global community of supporters and experts, its massive outreach of hundreds of social innovations in the field of disability and the conferences, both in Chile and in Vienna. Uh, as mentioned before, 31 projects have been 
uh, through the impact transfer program so far and uh, uh, 10 new projects are currently in the program. Uh, in the Zero Project report, there is a dedicated section on the impact transfer, including some stories on the replication of our participants. And I'm really delighted to see again seven out of our alumni presenting uh, to you today in this forum. And they all have proven models that are ready to be adopted and adopted in Latin America. I wish you a big success. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I'll be coming back to you in a minute. Uh, Catalina, um, you joined forces with Zero Project and ESO Foundation to replicate the Zero Project and the Impact Transfer Program in, in Latin America. Thank you very much for hosting us and offering us this wonderful opportunity today. What did you find interesting about the impact transfer? And the impact transfer. ¿Y qué te convenció a apoyar este trabajo? Good afternoon to everyone. Joining this exciting first edition of Zero Project Impact Transfer Forum in Latin America. As we all know, Zero Project does a wonderful job of finding new social innovations that make inclusion real and eliminate barriers for millions of people with disabilities around the world. Together with Ashoka and the Impact Transfer Project, not only solutions are co-creative, but the organizations are also given the tools to keep making change happen. Tools to grow and replicate in other contexts where their innovation is severely needed. We are delighted to be joining the Zero Project Infrastructure Program for the third year. As partners of Zero Project, we were invited in 2018 and 2019 to participate in the program, and we saw firsthand how it helps organizations clarify their work, what their needs are, improve their strategy, create new ideas, and go home with a new mindset. We are also very happy of being able to provide a Spanish-speaking and regional focus to better support practices in Latin America, helping them find the best local partners to take on this task. We believe that these solutions have a great potential and that the impact transfer is a powerful program to continue eliminating the barriers that limit inclusion. Our experience so far has convinced us to continue expanding the program to create new opportunities, especially in Latin America. We are proud partners of both Zero Project and Astro. Several other organizations, like Savanshi Foundation, for example, have been actively participating in the program and supporting the relocation of different projects. We are gradually building a global ecosystem for application of these solutions. Now, happily in Latin America too. Thank you very much, Catalina. That is indeed, we're all very excited of this new, this new avenue. Um, let's, let's now hear indeed from, um, from one of our key program partners, um, Nev Gould. So you're the general manager of Sabanshi Foundation. Um, and you have been a partner of this program since its beginning. Uh, as a matter of fact, you have already supported the replication of some of our program alumni in Turkey. Um, and some of these projects we'll be presenting uh, in a couple minutes. Can you share a bit more on your experience with Impact Transfer as a replication supporter and partner? Of course, thank you, Loic, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm very excited now being part of this organization. Zero Project is an amazing conference, inspiring us all the time. Thank you, Martin. And now we are in Latin America. Thank you, Carola, for organizing it. I would like to try to share our experience the most so that I can inspire others and we can learn from each other. Uh, my greetings are from Turkey, from Sabancı Foundation. So we are the biggest family foundation in Turkey. Since 46 years, we've been working on social development. And disability is one of our key focus areas. We've been joining this conference, Zero Project, since 2013. It's been a long time. And now we are an active partner in the Impact Transfer Program. And I'm happy to share what we have experienced in the Impact Transfer Program. 
every year after joining the conference zero project we return back to turkey with a lot of ideas with a lot of inspiration and it's how it started that we organized uh, our traditional philanthropy seminar in turkey since last two years with the title technologies for life without barriers we invited speakers and organizations from all over the world to turkey and we discussed about independent living education and technology very similar to zero project we also showcased new technologies developed for people with disabilities so it was also a success in turkey and these seminars also inspired many turkish people and organizations working on disability we met melissa two years ago at the zero project conference when listening to her project we were very excited she will be also sharing today her pitch so you will be able to listening to her pitch as well so we really liked the storybook app <laughs> created for children with hearing disabilities also in turkey there are so many children with hearing disabilities who do not have enough materials that will develop their cognitive skills so there is the great need for materials to develop their Turkish and Turkish sign language, improve their creativity and, and influence their academic and social life. So we invited the Galude University and Melissa to our seminar. That's how it started to happen. We introduced them to a local NGO the NGO is called Association of People with Hearing Imper Impairment of Turkey. And they met each other and they started talking, exchanging experience and know-how. They have collaborated and applied to our grant program. So today we are supporting the project with our grant program. We managed to replicate a very successful model in Turkey. Within the project, a story on environment created by Galuda University is translated to Turkish sign language and Turkish. And we, we managed to have an add-on. Uh, we created an original story of a very well-known public fictional character in Turkish culture. And that created story is also included in the project in a form of culture transfer. Not only we replicated the existing story, but also created one on our own. So we are so happy to be able to make an add-on what Melissa and the team has created. Another point that makes us very happy is adopting an inclusion perspective during the development uh, stage. Now we are working on making the story accessible for blind children by developing audio descriptions. Mm. And we are planning to add more stories to the app. It so that with richer with more stories on the app. And last year, we again joined Zero Project conference and we listened to the new uh, impact transfer project. And one of them uh, was the project uh, with um, Capito. So that's how we met Neil. And we introduced them afterwards to another local NGO 
and it's a museum project, so to our museum in Turkey. And right now, they're working on replicating the project in Turkey. So I would like to thank Niels for the effort to replicate the second project in Turkey, despite to the restrictions, heavy restrictions, travel restrictions because of the COVID. And the project uh, targets the young people with disabilities and autism. They will be trained how to work in a museum. They managed it, so we are also very eager to manage it in our uh, case, in our museum, and to employ them after they complete their trainings. So we are also very excited uh, for collaboration as well. So, so far, <laughs> that's all I would like to share. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you very much, Nevkul, and we're delighted to be able to count on the support of partners like Sabanshi Foundation to help replicate these innovations, because that's really the, the goal of this whole program. Um, before we close the panel, I would maybe invite each of you three to, to briefly share a key message to our audience today. Um, Martin, would you like to start? Yes, thank you. We are so excited to expand our mission for a world without barriers in Latin America and the Spanish speaking community worldwide. And the impact transfer program as a key part of this joint venture. And we hope um, you will join us in helping these uh, exciting innovations make connections and reach new audiences. Thank you, Martin. Um, Nevgul, what would be your your message to the audience. Yes, I would like to encourage all participants today that will be listening to the following peak sessions, thinking about how they will be bridging these projects with their networks. It might be through funding as we did, or through creating network with the local NGOs for the greater impact. So we are so glad to be part of this systematic matchmaking progress and process. And I, I'm very thankful to the Impact Transfer Program. Thank you very much, Nevgul. And Cantalina, the closing words will be for you. Thank you. I want to also join in emphasizing how important it is to co-build an ecosystem that will support the replication of inclusive, so inclusive solutions in Chile and all Latin America. It is an incredible journey, and we hope all of you will decide to embark on it with us. Your support will make our societies better. We will make our societies prosper. Thank you so much for joining us today in this forum. Thank you very much, Catalina, and thank you very much to all three of you uh, for this panel discussion. Okay, well, we're moving on to the next part of our agenda. Um, you will now be hearing these seven projects presenting to you in four minutes. So they have strict guidelines um, and they will be presenting their work, presenting also how their model could be replicated in other geographies and explaining also what their needs are. Um, so this is an offer to all of you here in the audience to get inspired and perhaps identify ways to support and collaborate. How can you do that? You can use the chat in the session platform to add any comments, questions. You can use the question box to address specific questions to the, some speakers. And as Carola mentioned earlier on, you can on the platform browse to the impact transfer section and find an overview of each project. And on each project page, there's a specific possibility for you to offer support. This can be support to implement these ideas in your local context. It can be mentoring, it can be funding, it can be connections, it can be visibility. I'm sure all of us and all of you can find a way to support uh, the replication of, of these initiatives. Uh, and I encourage you to really try to use those opportunities to do so. And of course, you can also in the chat send a direct message 
to the to the speakers uh, for a follow up discussion after the after the forum. Great. Okay, then off we go to our seven presentations, and we will be starting with Melissa Malskun, who is the founder and the creative director of Motion Light Lab an award-winning lab that creates interactive and bilingual tools to support literacy development for young deaf children. Melissa will be presenting the program VL2 Storybook Created, which, as Nifgul mentioned earlier, has already been replicated in several countries. Welcome, Melissa. Yes. The floor is yours. Wonderful. There we go. Hello, everyone. All right. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure that I could see myself on the live presentation. Wonderful. So again, I want to thank Navgul for talking about her, just her wonderful stories about the project that we did in the Deaf Association in Turkey. And I just wanted to say that that really hits the nail on the head about our work and how we work to make sure that deaf children have access to sign language. Research has shown, we know that all children need access to language and deaf children specifically need access to a visual signed language. With sign language, children build a foundation that leads to their literacy development. And also their access to the world at large. Language is needed to be able to access the world. Not only to access the world, but to communicate with families. People express their thoughts, creativity. Without language, people don't have access to their humanity. And when we remove language, we remove humanity. And that's where my work comes in to make sure that we all have access to language. Next slide. Next slide, please. As you can see here, 95% of deaf children around the globe are born to hearing parents. Only 3% of those children have access to a bilingual educational experience. Again, let me, let me say again, only 3% have access to sign language as well as education in writ the written language of their country. That is an incredibly small percent. But we do have the answer to this problem. There is a solution. The solution is to involve the deaf community in a deaf child's education in order to create sign language based resources. And we do that here through our bilingual storybook apps by engaging with the deaf community in a certain locale and then disseminating that to the community at large, sharing it with schools, teachers of the deaf and sharing it with families who have deaf children. So those deaf children have access to native sign language. Now, the earlier, the better for these deaf children. You cannot wait because language deprivation has a severe impact to a child, even into adulthood. In our work, we have de developed a platform. It's a tool to allow people to create bilingual storybook apps. And we've worked with different countries, like was recently discussed. We worked with a group 
of deaf community members in Turkey to develop these bilingual storybooks. We already have the tools and resources so that communities can develop their own native stories in sign language. In Turkey, that was in Turkish sign language and written Turkish. We've done that as well in Thailand, working with uh, countries like Panama. We worked with Norway, Japan, Russia, and other communities to disseminate these storybooks. Now this takes a foundation of funding, also engaging the community that understands the importance of equity in these two languages is vital. We must also engage the local deaf community where we're working. Next slide, please. Next slide. In our program, we provide training, we grow a team, we have a strong network, and the training that we do is with the goal of capacity building. That way, the local team has exactly what they need to develop their storybook apps. And what you can see from the story told about Turkey is that the project was replicated, capacity building was done in country, and our long-term goal is to build a global digital library of different stories in sign languages of the world and their corresponding written languages. There's so much talent out there in the deaf community that we can capitalize on artists, proficient storytellers, but often those communities are underground and overlooked. And so in this program, we work to uplift those communities and underrepresented voices around the world and then share more of those stories, more of the content. And the more we learn, the more that we can learn to cherish our world and the beauty of diversity and diverse perspectives. So again, that's just in a, a nutshell of what we've done through the impact transfer work. And I look forward to collaborating with you. Please feel free to contact us with more information. And we look forward to working with all of the Zero Project participants and the amazing things that you are all doing. Thank you very much, Melissa, and congratulations for your impressive work. Um, from Melissa, we're in the US, we're now gonna Thank travel you, to- Welcome. We're now traveling to Brazil and our next speaker will be Alan Thomas, who's a project manager at the Escola de Gente in Brazil, and he will be presenting their project Accessibility Promotion Agents. Alan? Hello, can you hear me? Everything working? All right, um, yeah. Hello, I'm legitimately overjoyed to be here. Um, before I begin, a quick description of myself. I'm a young white man, black hair, beard, mustache, brown eyes. I'm wearing a black blazer over a brown shirt. Next slide, please. My name is Alan Thomas. Three years ago, when I was 22, I was an intern at Escola de Gente and eventually hired full-time. As the NGO is an international reference in inclusion and communicational accessibility, the work experience was transforming. I became a professional that can intervene whenever a right is violated, especially of persons with disabilities, and along the way, learned a lot about myself and the world. That is why it means so much uh, to me to be here today and present this project. It has the potential to guarantee the equity between people with and without disability. How? By training a generation of young people to not discriminate. Next slide, please. That is exactly what our project, Accessibility Promotion Agents, aims to do. For that, we developed a deep training program of 45 hours in seven modules. You can jump another uh, slide, please. 
youth with and without disability learn together about inclusion and ethics of diversity, rights of pers persons with disability and decent work, accessible communication, audio description, accessible culture, physical accessibility, and sign language. Our uniqueness is that we offer total accessibility in communication, allowing youth with and without disabilities to experience together all the forms of human communication. It is a complete experience of how every communication should be that is accessible. Next slide, please. We trained 250 young people in low-income communities. According to the UN, 80% of the persons with disabilities live in poverty in countries in development like Brazil. The knowledge acquired is very valuable, allowing people to become leaders in their communities. For example, one of our agents is always called by the local public hospital to interpret sign language for deaf patients. We work mostly in low-income communities, but unfortunately, the discrimination between youth with and without disability happens everywhere. Next slide, please. Um, the pandemic has greatly impacted this previously in-person project. However, we took the opportunity to adapt. Now, we have a methodology to give this training in an entirely virtual environment. The full accessibility uh, we had, which will be shown in the slide, has not been affected. Our virtual methodology has three accessibilities, sign language, subtitling, and audio description in and out of the virtual meeting environment. Recent example was a series of workshops we gave to UNICEF. Next slide, please. We were a part of the impact transfer training two years ago. Thanks to it, we earned the courage to put ourselves out there, to make proposals. We are very thankful to the team for both that opportunity and the one to be here today. Uh, next slide, please. So as soon as we were contemplated by the impact transfer with the project accessibility promotion agents, Brazil entered a period of great social, political, and economical instability. And the rights of persons with disabilities unfortunately regressed a lot in the country. Due to that, we have been providing this very training model to multiple companies, especially now that it's online with full accessibility. We are very excited about the new possibilities and have the content and ability to replicate anywhere in the world. So if you have or want to build a format to bring it to your environment, we want to talk to you. Um, hopefully you take us up on the offer. Um, last but not least, a message. Claudia Van Eck, our founder and superintendent, sends everyone her regards and says that she is very, very, very Cariño proud of Zero Project's expansion uh, to Latin America. Muy a lot. de um, thank you so much for having me. Nuestro... This was incredible. <laughs> So many incredible people here. I'm I'm so excited. I'm so, there. We go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adam, and greetings to Claudia and the whole co Brazilian community. I see there are some interactions in the chat. Uh, so hello to to the whole Brazilian community. And we were talking earlier about change making and social entrepreneurship. I think um, you perfectly illustrate, Alan, how your organization, as most of all your organizations here in the room, saw the pandemic, of course, as a challenge, but also as an opportunity right, to digitalize your work and make it even more accessible and inclusive. So congratulations to that as well. Great. Moving on, our next speaker will be Anna Barbosa, who's the executive director of Empowerment Through Integration. And she will be presenting the model they developed in Lebanon which also includes some scalable e-learning components. Welcome, Anna. Thank you so much, Loic. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me here today. And um, so I'll start. My name is Anna Barbosa. As Loic mentioned, I'm the Executive Director of Empowerment Through Integration. And today I'm here to present our project uh, entitled Specialized uh, e-learning for families of blind youth and local professionals. Um, okay, so um, as we all know, we have uh, a huge problem in society, which is society's misconceptions about people with disabilities and the lack of appropriate knowledge on how to integrate individuals and include individuals with disabilities in different levels of society. 
ETI aims to break the cycle of disempowerment of people with disabilities and promote authentic inclusion by focusing primarily and intensively on capacity building of professionals, local professionals, and families. Our, how is it that we focus on this problem? Our model combines two approaches. We combine a specialized life skills training and mindset shift training that together accelerate inclusion globally. Next slide. Next. Thank you. Um, and how do we go about it? We bridge specialized knowledge and underserved communities in different parts of the world. So our training focuses on addressing and transforming cultural misconceptions about disabilities, such as uh, curses or having this as a product of divine punishment, historical and intergenerational prejudice against people with disabilities, and the false assumptions and stereotypes that are still associated with the capabilities, the potentials of individuals with disabilities. Next. So what is our solution? We implement specialized life skills e-learning with families of blind youth and local professionals, both virtually and hybrid in different communities. And we bridge the gap between underserved communities and specialists in the field. These specialists being teachers for visually impaired and orientation and mobility specialists. And one of our key features is actually incorporating individuals who are blind and visually impaired from these communities who are our alumni back into our program and as life skills trainers who will maintain and sustain the empowerment of individuals with disabilities in their communities. Next. In 2020, we have focused our work in Lebanon with the individuals that are beneficiaries and families on the ground. In 2021, we'll aim to reach and train 300 families in local and local professionals in different countries. Our application plan we will be bringing our e-learning program both virtually and in a hybrid format to different countries. And we're seeking local partners and funders who are interested in sponsoring families and professionals in their local communities to receive our specialized training free of charge. Again, we're gonna be focusing in different countries and we hope to expand to Latin America as well. And we're looking for local partners, NGOs, corporations, educational institutions and funders foundations and grants and corporations who are interested in supporting the dissemination of our program in their communities. Next. So our needs again, we are looking for sponsors and donors and possible sources of funding who are able and interested to support the dissemination of our program with local professionals and families of individuals who are blind or visually impaired in their communities. And identification of local strategic partners who can support the outreach and recruitment of families and local professionals to participate in our program. Again, my name is Anna Barbosa, and I'll be more than happy to respond to any questions later on about our programs and how is it that you can collaborate with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, before we move on to our next four speakers, I would like to just offer one minute of reflection to the audience on what they have heard so far. And this is maybe an opportunity also to you know, send a chat message or, or have a look at their project page and perhaps fill in the support form. Um, so I'll just pause for a minute and allow each of you to reflect and perhaps connect with the speakers. Right. Okay. Can I help you? Oh, ah. No, no, all, all good. I was just offering a bit of time to the audience to reflect on all the information they got and, and, and start connecting with the projects. Um, and we're moving on then to our next, our next project, which is uh, actually a project from, from Chile. So uh, I'm pleased to welcome Maria Teresa von Fürstenberg. Um, 
who manages the Diploma in Social Labor Skills at the Universidad Andres Veo in Chile, a program that focuses on the inclusion of young people with cognitive disabilities into higher education. Bienvenida, Maria Teresa. Hi, good afternoon. Oh, this has been to me a very, very amazing experience. My name is Maria Teresa von Fürstenberg from Andres Bello University here in Santiago, Chile. I will present you our project called Social Labor Training Program for People with Intellectual Disabilities in a University Setting. Next, please. 14 years ago, 14 years ago in Chile, there was no job training inclusive program for people with intellectual disabilities. This situation was detrimental to the self-esteem and life project. They couldn't work because they were not prepared. In brief, the lack of training inclusive programs specially designed for them was the gap we expected to fill, aiming to achieve a real and effective inclusion through their participation in the labor market. Next, please. So, next, please. <laughs> so, our solution was to create a three year social labor training program within a university setting, which offers young people with intellectual disabilities the opportunity to train for their future works. They share in the whole campus with students of all careers, but in the learning process with their peers. This program trains them to become assistants in the areas shown on the slides, based in their interests and abilities. During the three years, we foster labor skills and comprehensive development, and in consequence, we improve the quality of life. Next, please. Several studies show us that 83% of our students feel really included in the university community. 73% of them increase his self-esteem. 63 of our graduates are working. Data's of last year, obviously. Yeah. 40% of our graduates are even working for five years or more in the same companies. 94% of the employers perceive our graduates' job performance as satisfactory. Also, the model has successfully been repl replicated in La Coruña University in Spain, in Catholic University in Argentina, in Anahuac University in Mexico, among others. So, next please, what we can offer. Yes. Next please. No. Yes, what we can offer. We can share our inclusive educational model based in equity. This model comprehends our curriculum adaptations, specially designed for the intellectual profile and pace of learning of personalized education, our cognitive accessible methodologies, and our special protocols to manage students' behavior and learning difficulties, among others, with a multidisciplinary team support. That is very, very important. Well, we expect to replicate this model in any countries with similar job training needs. How? We are willing to share it through partnerships and alliances. With whom? With higher education organizations that aim to develop an inclusive culture in their communities. Next, please. So, so, we don't talk about inclusion, we just do it. This uh, uh, photo uh, is our 2018 generation. 
So we just do it. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Maria Teresa, and also congratulations for the impact you're achieving through this program and just doing it, as you say. Um, <laughs> I'd like to welcome our, our next speakers, and this will be a, a duo, a team uh, composed of um, Connie van der Hakis, who is the interim president of Dance Abilities International Board, and Cesar Martinez, who's the director of the Latin American Center of Dance Ability. And they will be presenting the danceability methodology and its replication in Uruguay. Connie and Cesar, welcome. Thank you. Um, greetings from the US and Uruguay. I'm Connie Van Der Aikis, presenting with my colleague Cesar Martinez. People, um, if we could change the slide. People with and without disabilities are separated and isolated from each other and have a limited experience in being together in physical activity and dance. Research shows us that isolation adversely affects health, wellness, mental health, and productivity. Educators who are not trained to facilitate total inclusive experiences perpetuate systemic oppression and prejudice. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. There we are. Uh, next slide. There we go. Alito Alessi founded Danceability in 1987. The mission of Danceability is to dissolve barriers and connect people with and without disabilities through dance and movement. Artistic expression is a powerful tool that connects us. Next slide, please. The danceability method has been written, tested, and revised over 33 years. It works with all people in any combination of people. Next slide, please. Inclusive dance communities worldwide experience the benefit of being together in physical activity and artistic expression, and thus change the perceptions of relationships between people with and without disabilities. This mutual learning facilitates an equal evolution of society and eliminates the concept of isolation. Next slide, please. Danceability is the art of being together. Our team has over 600 certified teachers in 45 countries across seven continents. During the recent um, beginning of the pandemic, our team of danceability teachers created virtual guidelines with Alito, and our teachers are doing virtual classes all over the world. Approximately 20% of all our danceability teachers, like Cesar, identify as having a disability and are considered successful in the field of dance education. I would now like to introduce my esteemed colleague, Cesar Martinez. Hi. Next slide, please. A large donation from Marisa De Leon fueled the beginning of the Latin American project in 2010. Marisa, a visionary woman born in Montevideo, Uruguay, founded Escuela Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1941 for children with disabilities. She became a supporter of Danceability International because of her passion to expand expressive opportunities for children. Marisa's Fund have enabled Danceability International to offer affordable workshops all over Latin America. The money allowed us to help to establish affiliations, run certification programs, and offer scholarships. I myself am an example of those students and those scholarships. I owe my master teacher title to Marisa's sponsoring. We have our Latin American Danceability Center in Montevideo, and most recently, we have just contracted with the Universidad de la República, the university in Uruguay the, of the state, and we also teach the method in the Instituto de Profesores Artigas. The danceability method has become part of the curriculum students. There are seven danceability affiliations in other countries over 60 certified danceability teachers and 10 master teachers in Latin America. Next slide, please. 
our scaling project for Danceability International and our Latin American affiliates are threefold. One, create and launch a new website that is accessible in multiple viewings and in multiple languages. Two, create new scholarship money for people with disabilities to attend workshops, intensives, certifications, and master training programs in our Latin American programs. Three, find matching funds to help strengthen our Latin American center in Uruguay to support our, our affiliations through collaborations, mentoring, and business skills. Next slide, please. We need funding support to move our vision for Latin America to the next level in three areas. Accessible website, scholarship monies, and mentoring and business skills. As a supporter of Danceability International's Latin American project, you help eliminate isolation between people with and without disabilities, create social change further in the work in arts and culture, education, and increase employment opportunities. Next slide. Thank you. We are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Connie and Siza. Um, I, I always love your, your energy. I think at this point last year at the conference in Vienna, we were dancing in the, in the room, uh, kindly facilitated by your team, something we could consider for our next online experience as well. Um, thank you very much. We got um, <laughs> Sure. Uh, well, moving from, from the US and Uruguay to Colombia, um, and we'll hear again from a, a duo from Monica Cortes, who is the executive director of AS Down Colombia, and Diana Moreno, who is the advocacy director at Pro Familia. And Monica and Diana will be presenting the project My Sexuality, My Rights, which was developed by Pro Familia, AS Down Colombia, Lika, and País in Colombia. Welcome, Monica and Diana. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Diana Moreno, and I am here in representation of Pro Familia, one of the organizations working in the project My Sexuality, My Right. This project um, seeks precisely to create awareness of the sexual and reproductive rights of people with intellectual and psychosocial disabilities. I would like to ask for Next slide. And just for me to be on air, thank you. As I was saying, um, this project aims to create awareness of the sexual and reproductive rights of people with intellectual and psychosocial disabilities. And you may wonder, why is it important to talk about sexuality? Well, for many people still, it is a struggle to think about whether people with disabilities should form families, should or could live a healthy and pleasurable sexuality, and even experience sexual desire. And this doubt or, or bans around uh, the sexuality of people with disability are based precisely on stereotypes about their sexuality. These stereotypes sometimes are made concrete in forms of violence, such as for sterilization procedures in Colombia and in the world. And the experiences of high rates of sexual violence, especially between minors and women with disabilities. People with disabilities also face a lack of comprehensive sexual education due to also a lack of inclusive education um, in general and an absence on the prevention services and health services in general. This is why, next slide please, we have joined forces with four stakeholders. People with disabilities themselves, of course, who are at the center of our work. Families of people with disabilities who are also part of, of the guaranteeing of the rights. Decision policymakers 
and the health sector, health providers, who are also a part of guaranteeing sexual and reproductive rights. Next slide. During the last eight years, we have been working on four strategies to provide a solution precisely to this problem. First, we have worked on empowering on, of young leaders. We have done this through caring, comprehensive sexual education training processes with inclusive education for both young people with and without disabilities. We have already trained more than 120 leaders from six different cities in Colombia who have not only been able to promote and understand better how to make decision-making around their sexuality, but also how to know their rights and to improve their realities. Currently, we are training 175 more leaders that we hope that end their training by the end of next year. A second strategy that we have implemented is precisely the development of tools and of routes to have a comprehensible and accessible health provision model that will allow for people with disabilities to have services that respect their confidentiality and their decision-making when it comes to their sexuality. This model has been an example and has been inspiring for Colombia as a whole. Thanks to our advocacy measure, which is our third strategy that was based on this comprehensive model, we were able to uh, impose the Ministry of Health to enact the Regulation 1904 of 2017. Throughout this regulation, it makes reasonable accommodations mandatory throughout the health sector in Colombia and prohibits forced sterilization in our country. Finally, on our fourth strategy, we have been working on the development of research and knowledge production. We developed the first research about sexual violence on people with intellectual and psychosocial disabilities in Colombia, taking into account their voices and experiences. And we are currently developing a research that takes into account precisely the experiences of sexuality that young people with disabilities live, taking into account their life stories and their participation as researchers. With this, I would like to give the word to my colleague, Monica. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Monica Cortez. I am representing here in this project, Family Voices, and also the work with persons with intellectual disability, disabilities in this project, including, of course, my son, Alejandro, who is my inspiration on all that I do. Uh, continue with the, our project presentation, I want to tell you what do we want to replicate? We want to replicate the comprehensive model that includes strategies to impact all the stakeholders mentioned by Diana. Uh, how? Sharing our knowledge and experience that we had built in during the last six years also, we want to share tools and provide technical assistance to different actors. Where we want to scale up our practice in different regions, not only in Colombia and other countries, uh, also in Latin America. Uh, so we celebrate, of course, that Zero Project stay now here in Latin America. Next, please. Who are we looking for? We are looking partners that work on gender topics and disability rights, health institutions that want to make service inclusive for all, including all persons with disabilities, families and people with disabilities that want to talk about sexuality and reproductive rights. And finally, donors that want to invest in the replication and strengthening of this practice. Next, please. Now, I want to leave you with this quote from 1992. 
uh, by a finger that represent the sins on our project. Sexuality as our deepest oppression, as our deepest pain. We hope to we hope you join us in the defense of sexual and reproductive rights for people with disabilities. Thank you always for the opportunity to share our experience in this important event. Thank you very much, Monica and Tiana. And indeed, thank you for reminding us also of the importance of this topic, which is often overlooked. Shifting now to our last but not least speaker uh, for this for this forum, uh, Niels Wopke, who is the director of um, Capito Mecklenburg in Germany. And Niels will be presenting their project called New Ways to Art, um, which they developed in Germany and are now replicating in other countries. Welcome, Niels. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, Thank you, Loic and uh, Nefgul, uh, for the kind introduction later on, earlier on, I mean. Um, yeah, I'm so delighted to show you and present you our project with the Schwerin Art Museum, which is called Training Museum Guides with Special Needs to Provide and Foster Inclusive Education Programs in Museums and Cultural Institutions. I'm a 40 year old uh, white skin color man uh, with a um, with short dark blonde hair and wearing a blue shirt and a jacket. Next slide please. Yeah, what is uh, the essence of our project? Um, we experienced that physical and informational barriers are root causes of museum exclusion. Therefore, we educate people with special needs as museum inclusion ambassadors and auditors to work in a museum. As you can see here in these two pictures, uh, our group of uh, seven museum guides that we educated so far. Um, they can work as museum guides in a museum or also as museum coaches. Um, we believe that they can then help museums and organizations and its staff with their perspective and awareness to become a more inclusive place for all. Next slide, please. So um, we actually head out for and see three target groups uh, addressed by our project. First of all, for us, the people with special needs, then the museums and art institutions, and also, of course, the society, the visitors and the non-visitors. Um, what activities and impact do we see on them? First of all, um, the people with special needs, um, our activities that we offer are education for museum work. The intended impact is that they are represented in the organigram of museums as part of the museum. Then second, the museum and its staff we see. The activities um, that we offer them are action plans to implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and the staff will get inclusive training by them. The intended impact is an excellent accessibility in the future, and that museum changes into place for all people in society. And then, of course, very important, the visitors and the non-visitors that will be shown the art. The activities that we offer them are new perspectives on arts and accessible information, for example, easy to understand language or shown by accessible media and different senses. The intended impact for them that the visitors understand the museum information and non-visitors become visitors. In our program so far, we um, had um, shown our art presentation for almost 800 people by right now, also in digital ways. 
yeah, next slide, please. Um, the project, um, yeah, uh, another uh, slide, please. The next one. Um, I have a quote by my colleague, um, Felix Edling, who's a museum guide, and um, his experience on the project is that um, he got more self confident. And now he has a clear perspective and motivation of working as a museum guide on the first labor market in Germany. Yeah, next slide, please, or second next slide, actually. I think we, yeah, now one more slide, please. Yeah. Um, what is our replication strategy? Um, we would like to replicate by the train the trainer concept. Uh, we have developed a manual for training and accessible materials within nine modules and so far 42 learning units, which have, have accessible uh, ways to, to understand and get informed. Um, we also offer for uh, the museums a museum academy that can be replicated and that will give coaching seminars and workshops and would develop together action plans and management changes. Um, yeah, where do we replicate so far? We are doing this in Germany in several places in the Frankfurt area and in the west of Germany. And also, uh, we are in good contact, as Nefkel said, in Turkey and also Austria. And now we, of course, would like to get in touch with the institutions and people in South America. Next slide, please. And um, therefore, we look for social investors um, to encourage our program uh, for museums that would employ at the end the museum guides or that they can do it uh, on vocational ways. Um, of course, we need trainers for education, which uh, implement our trainer manual. And the most important thing for us um, that uh, we address people with special needs for the guide education. Yeah, the last uh, slide, please. Now we would like um, that you join us in setting a new inclusive standard in cultural institutions and museums. And yeah, I appreciate that you uh, joined uh, our presentation. And yeah, we would be happy to answer your questions and get in touch on this project. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nin. So for all of you listening to us today and and excited to see the cultural sector becoming more inclusive, uh, connect with Niels um, and, and, and with some of the others who presented today. I would here, I'd like to thank all seven speakers uh, for being here with us today and sharing their work and, and their energy and their passion. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's a great panel of modules and approaches um, and congratulations for all your work. Um, I'd like also, before we close, to thank the panelists uh, and the impact transfer team, in particular Paula, Ignacia, Carola, of course, and, and, and the partners of the program. Um, and I'd like to thank you, uh, the audience, for, for taking your time and, and being curious and listening today. Um, we, on purpose, end our presentation 10 minutes earlier to allow you now to really um, just connect with the speakers. Uh, use the direct messaging chat function, have a look at their project page on the impact transfer section, um, suggest some forms of support. Uh, as you saw, they're all, all kind and, and, and open and willing to connect. So feel free to just be curious, connect, ask them questions. They would certainly also be very interested to learn more about you and your work. Um, so this is an opportunity to create synergies and, and, and perhaps collaborations. Thank you very much uh, for attending and I will pass the word back to Carola, I believe. Thank you very much, Loic. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you have been wonderful um, sharing with us all the information. Muchas gracias eh, por haber compartido esta información. Bueno, ya estamos de regreso. 
Mientras nos preparamos para nuestra While we prepare for the next session on technological innovation for education and employers, I want to leave you with the orchestra music ensemble of Quillota. Uh, for the first time, they are uh, playing again after seven months of quarantine. And Jessica told me, the director told me, music is a gift that improves the life of people and teaches discipline commitment and joy. We know the effort and work they have dedicated to be here with us. Welcome. And thank you very much for being with us. I give you the Musica Ensemble Orchestra Fieta that will start the presentation live, Latin American music. <laughs> 